Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. prophet Isaiah. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained to fear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all people, the sheet that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. From Revelation of John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, 
For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out from heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. And then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. 
So the Jews said to him, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was laying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In our gospel today, we meet Lazarus, but we meet him after he's already six feet under the ground. Or, uh, I guess in first century Palestine, he wouldn't be there, but behind a big rock. And it's an unbelievable story, if you think about it, right? But if we've been following the story from the beginning, we should have expected Lazarus to come out of the grave. In John's Gospel, Jesus begins by giving new life to some water at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. But he doesn't stop there. It's a small but a first step. As we read on, the signs of, of new life continue. The healing of the official son in chapter 4, the the healing of the paralyzed man in chapter 5, and the feeding of the 5,000 in chapter 6. You see, each new sign in the gospel raised the stakes until we get to chapter 9, mentioned in our gospel gospel today, where Jesus gives sight, new life, if you will, to the eyes of a man born blind. After that, The next step had to be Lazarus. I mean, what else could we have expected? What else could have been done except Lazarus, come on out? Is it crazy for us to believe such things? I mean, it's a crazy story, isn't it? But who's to say what's crazy and what's sane with respect to the resurrection of the dead? It all depends on our assumptions, doesn't it? If we assume the world is sane, then Jesus, in the words of my dearly departed grandmother, is crazier than a June bug. Because of the difference between the world and Jesus. The world says, mind your own business. Jesus says, love one another. The world says, follow your heart and succeed. 
Jesus says, follow me and be crucified. The world says, drive carefully. The life you save may be your own. Jesus says, whoever would save their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. The world says, law and order. Jesus says, love your enemies. The world says, get. Jesus says, give. In terms of the world's definition of sanity, Jesus is crazy. Now, that doesn't mean that you and I, as followers of Jesus, should hate the world. No. After all, earlier in John's Gospel, that that famous passage that we all learned in Sunday school says that God so loved the world. God's a world lover. And that Jesus came into the world not to condemn the world, but to save the world. But it does mean that we need to name things for what they truly are. The world is a beautiful place. It is, after all, God's creation. I mean, we have a Chamber of Commerce Day right out the doors here on this Sunday. It's beautiful out there. It's a lovely world. But for all its beauty, the world is not currently congruent with God's purposes. I mean, heaven help us if we think the world as it is now (laughs) is what God is intending for the world. In fact, the world is in open rebellion against the will of God. God decrees love, and the worldly practice hate. God commands we forgive, yet the worldly seek vengeance. God shows compassion to the stranger, the alien, and the immigrant, yet the worldly hatefully turn them away. God loves the poor. The worldly blame the poor for being poor. You see, in terms of how the world is currently ordered, Jesus is crazy. But let's stay with me here. Let's for, assume for a second the opposite is true. Let's assume the world is crazy <laughs> and Jesus is the one who is sane. That changes everything, doesn't it? But that places you and me in a dilemma. It's a profound dilemma. You see, we can't follow Jesus faithfully as his disciples saying the truth is somewhere in between. That the world is mainly sane, but a little bit crazy, and Jesus is mainly sane, a little bit crazy. It's kind of somewhere in between. We can't have it both ways. Now, it might be easier to have it both ways if all we're talking about is changing a little water into wine. That's a nice little parlor trick that can be done, right? It becomes harder when we're talking about feeding the 5,000 or, or, or giving new life to the eyes of a man born blind, and it becomes impossible to have it both ways. We talk about raising the dead. There's no possibility for us to choose both. Because Jesus is either crazy, or he is the Lord of life. He either raises people from the dead, or he doesn't. You know, Jesus never met a corpse he didn't like. He never met a corpse he didn't raise. <laughs> you think, go through the gospel, read the gospel. Every time Jesus shows up and there's a corpse there, that corpse does not stay a corpse for very long. Whether it's the, the widow's son in Luke 7 or Jairus' daughter in Mark 5, it's the same as today's gospel. It's Lazarus. Get your stinky old self out of that grave. Unbind him and let him go. Now why? Why does every time Jesus meet a corpse, that corpse doesn't stay a corpse for very long? It's because it is the revealed word of God that we are to have new life. It is God's will for us. Now, at the same time, we shouldn't think it comes easy. We shouldn't think that 
It doesn't happen without cost. Because the cross looms large. Our new life comes at the, at the expense of the cross. If we get back into our story today from the gospel, we need to know the context there. Jesus, you know, wasn't just strolling through the suburbs of Jerusalem when he heard about his friend Lazarus being near death. No, he was out in the countryside. Why was he in the countryside? Well, we know from the story in chapter 9 and 10 that they were out to kill him. And people said, get out of here, Jesus. They're going to kill you. Go out to the countryside. So Jesus was out in the countryside avoiding death when he heard word that Lazarus was sick and about to die. So stay with me here. Jesus then had to go from the safety of the countryside into enemy territory where he knew he would be arrested and killed in order to save his friend Lazarus. And he raised him from the dead. Think about it. That's exactly what Jesus does for you and me. He comes in the enemy territory of our sin, doesn't he? He comes right in the middle of that, that enemy territory of our sin, whether we're six feet under the ground or sitting here listening to a sermon. He comes in the enemy territory of our sin and raises us up. And I'm just crazy enough to believe that. I'm crazy enough to believe that God loves a sinner like me that much. That God would venture into the garbage dump of my life, stand knee-deep in all that stuff and say, Scott, come on out now. Come on out. Come on out. And raise me up. What about you? Has Jesus met you where you really are? And as you really are? Not as you pose to be for the rest of the world, but as you really, really are? Has Jesus met you there? Has he ventured into the personal garbage dump of your life and said, come on out, I love you? Are you crazy enough to believe that he raises us from the dead? That he's the Lord of life? Now, before you answer that question, I've got one more thing for you. I want you to know that we can die before we die. We can die before we die. We can be like the, the walking dead on that TV show. It's on Netflix, right? That's what I heard. It could be just like the Walking Dead. When we give in to fear that the world propagates, we become the Walking Dead. When we choose to hate, we become the Walking Dead. When we want to protect only what's ours, we become the Walking Dead. When we deny the full humanity of any other person in God's creation, we become the walking dead. And the walking dead are still among us. A week ago Saturday, a member of the walking dead murdered 11 souls in Pittsburgh. A few days before that, a member of the Walking Dead murdered two souls outside of a Kroger store in Kentucky. Before that, there were nine souls murdered by the Walking Dead in Charleston. And unfortunately, the Walking Dead are still among us because that list goes on and on and on. We should be under no illusion that that's ancient history. We're still living that history today. Now back to my question. Are you crazy enough to believe that Jesus is the Lord of life? Are you crazy enough to believe that he raises us from the dead? 
If you are, and if I am, then the walking dead have no power over us. Whatsoever, they have no power over us. We will not fear them. We will enter the enemy territory that they have provided without fear because we're liberated to oppose them with the amazing grace of Jesus. The last words Jesus says in today's gospel are, unbind him and let him go. By the amazing grace of Jesus, God has unbound each one of us. And God has let us go into the world by the power of the Holy Spirit to oppose the walking dead with every ounce of strength we have. Because we trust that Jesus, no matter what, will raise us up. Maybe Jesus will even raise the walking dead. That's above my pay grade. I don't know. It's above my pay grade. But I'm crazy enough to believe that Jesus is the Lord of life. That Jesus will raise me up that Jesus will raise you up on the last day. Amen. Okay, the candidates, just the candidates right now, please stand, and their presenters can stand as well. The candidates will now be presented. I present these persons for confirmation. Nolan Dudley Baird III, Sally Carolyn Campbell, Abba Abriel Chandler, Kathleen Jisun Chandler, Addison Grace Cheeseborough, Susan, Susan Elizabeth Coleman, Atticus Kanet, 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 Spencer Sizemore, Palmer, Guinevere Renee Friedman, Eric Benjamin Henson, Juliana Catherine Lindsay, Molly Grace Lindsay, Matthew Lawrence Price, Robert William Rice III, John Joseph Shearer, Anna, Anna Marion Sims, Byron Shalane White. I present Mary Lynn Ford, William Brian Ford, Bonnie Higginbotham Hodges, Richard Tyler Van Hook to be received into this communion. I present Melissa Joy Friedman, James Leslie Holder, Carol Joy Vandenberg, Susan Lorraine Yarbrough, to the desire to be reaffirmed their, their baptismal vows. You got it all? That was lovely. Thank you. Thank you. This is addressed to the candidates just named. These two questions. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? This is addressed to the entire congregation, so I'd ask you to please stand as you are able. To all of you who witness these vows, do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God?
You believe in God, the Holy Spirit. Continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. I will, God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. I will, God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor? as yourself. You strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself. And that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service. Renew in these, your servants, the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of that Spirit, to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Defend the Lord, your servant, John Joseph, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Bonnie, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep. Defend, O Lord, your servant Spencer, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Beth, with your heavenly grace, 
that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. And, O Lord, your servant Nolan, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Anna with your heavenly grace that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your heavenly kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Addie with your heavenly grace that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Jack, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Rob with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. And, O Lord, your servant Byron, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Lord, your servant Kathleen, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Defend, O Lord, your servant Havilah with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. O 
and O Lord, your servant Tally, with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep. Amen. We recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Bless, preserve, and keep. Bill, we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Defend the Lord, your servant Matthew, with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Molly Grace with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Susan, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Eric with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen.
Carol. May the Holy Spirit, who's begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Juliana with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your heavenly kingdom. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who's begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. <coughs> Melissa. May the Holy Spirit, who's begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Gwen with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. I'm just warmed up if anybody else wants to come forward. <laughs> there you go. Please stand and, and grab the person next to you legally and appropriately. Uh, hold hands, grab earlobes, hold, make bodily contact with the person next to you. Up here too, everybody. Almighty and ever-living God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them. And so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good to see everyone here today uh, on this joyous occasion. I, I, I know since I've been here, I haven't seen this many be confirmed, received, and reaffirmed, uh, so it was a great day. 
uh, special day for family and friends that are here. We do welcome you if you're visiting. Uh, and plan on joining us out in the churchyard as we gather to congratulate our confirmands and newly received and all of that. And uh, Bishop, we are always glad to have you here. Thank you for your words today. You'll have a chance to visit with the bishop as well. Uh, there are a number of announcements. As a matter of fact, whole sheet full of them in your bulletin. I will remind you that uh, non-pledged offerings and designated gifts will go to the bishop's discretionary fund, which help him do so much of the work that he does. Also, I hope that this past week you received a letter from Father Jenkins and from uh, Brad Sandbeck about stewardship, about pledging to the life and ministry of the church. Uh, does anyone have a pledge card here with them by chance? Um, I had mine in my coat pocket. Somebody just hold one up. But you're welcome to put those in the alms basin today, uh, or they are in self-addressed envelopes. Mail those in as soon as you possibly can. Everything else, please, but no, finally, I do want to remind you that next Sunday at 5.30 in lieu of our Celtic service, we have choral evensong here at St. Paul's, which I truly believe to be the pinnacle of pure Anglican worship. So I do hope you will invite friends and family to come and be a part of that service. That's next Sunday at 5.30. Bishop, do you have anything to share? If you're offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you. First, leave your gift before the altar. Go and be reconciled one to the other. And then come and offer your gift.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light, inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. Then our disobedience took us far from you. You did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the grave, destroyed death. And made the whole creation new. And we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting 
his coming in glory. And offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. We pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all those in our parish families who have died this past year, especially Cree Kilpatrick, Vince Shivers, Michael McMurray, Frank Pride, Frank Falk Jr., Althea Richardson, Carol Hayes, Lynn Cadel, Ray Finney, Barbara Nussel, Carl Ben Hayes, Vance Logan Jr., William Mitchell, Canteen Jones Jr., Mary Jo Searcy, William Toole, Lou Lindsay, Gus Bachman, Tom Alshaus, William Buxton, George Van Geisen, Sudie Lee O'Connor, Roberta Reinhardt, Beth Wilcox Lee, Linda Gowdy, Willie Bell Roberts, Byron Beard, Bruce Hancock, Belva Smith, John McDonald, Wyatt Barzak, Susan Brown, Lester Heimick, Helmick, Thomas Goodwin, Lila Hopkins, Roger Giles, Christian Winitsky, Frank Prosser, Susan Campbell, and Cherry Hobb. And grant that we may find our inheritance with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
standing or kneeling as we are able, let us pray together our post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always.
into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.